So we have placed our creature within our landscape. We have kind of internally composited some stuff like this raspberry here. We've moved the arm. We've used puppet warp. We haven't changed anything about the lighting or the coloring of either our creature or the environment because first we just want to get kind of clean selections and cutouts. So I'm going to keep going with my 100% soft edged eraser. I'm going to make it a little bit harder edged. I'm using a tablet and making it pressure sensitive and now I'm going to cut out this arm. Have it overlap the waffle where I want it to overlap it. And now I've got this kind of edge of the waffle here with the raspberry. And I like how it just kind of spills into the texture of the creature, but I need to erase that just from that edge. I have an eight pixel feather just on my regular lasso. So you can see what that does. Deselect. And then I've got the back of the waffle here that I need to kind of find something that's a believable edge that the creature can go in front of. So maybe there, just so it doesn't draw too much attention. And then let's see, on the arm, can reveal a little bit more. I can always use uh, clone stamping as well. So for instance, if I want more of this raspberry showing, I can use my clone stamp. I can use it at 100%. Be very targeted here with a little bit more hardness. And I'm gonna save from, let's see, like this part. Well, let me turn off the arm. This part of the raspberry and kind of build that raspberry back at least in some way so that when the arms over it that makes sense <laughs> building it seed by seed there and then I can erase away and reveal that, you know, behind the arm. So he's reaching over a raspberry and kind of squishing a raspberry and kind of making this jelly as he goes. All right, so that's kind of the best placement of my creature that I've come up with. Now, I want to play with the coloring of my creature to match this environment. So of course I can do that directly in what's called a destructive way. And I can do that with my arm because I've already made a copy of my arm. So what are the ways to really match this lighting? First you want to identify the lighting of the environment. In the foreground here there seems to be bright light coming from kind of the upper left. And so what I can do is use my dodge tool. And again I use it at less than 20. Fairly large extremely soft, just the mid-tones, and on that arm I can hit that upper right side of it because the light's hitting there. And you can see how that makes a difference to make that arm kind of stand out in this environment, right? Now the problem is I could do that on my whole creature as well, but then I'm actually replacing the pixels as I go. So wouldn't it be nice, because dodge and burn can move things very quickly, if I can do it in a non-destructive way? So I'm going to show you that. So I'm going to take the arm out of it, just so you don't get confused by my overlapping layer there, that I'm, that I'm directly changing the pixels on. And I'm going to copy this layer, which is my creature, the rasterized version of it, where I've already kind of cut out its arm. And I'm going to say Command-J, so I have a copy. If it helps, I'll usually change the color of this layer to gray because this is going to be what's called a non-destructive overlay layer. And I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to say color overlay. 
and then normal, 100%, and the color I'm going to use is middle gray. I can also select it and say edit fill middle gray, but it works just to kind of find it. So you know where middle gray is. Then you're going to take that layer and you're going to say change it from normal mode to overlay mode. But in order for that to make sense, I'm going to take it back to normal. You have to what's called rasterize that layer style. So you can do lots of layer styles, drop shadows, gradients, glows, but they will be something added on top of your pixels and not integrated into your pixels until you do what's called rasterizing your layer style. So if you right click, just like you rasterize a smart object, you can rasterize your layer style. Now this is gray in the pixels. And then when I go from normal to overlay mode, you'll see that it shouldn't change your creature all that much. It dimmed mine a little bit just because my middle gray was just like 55% gray instead of 50% gray. What's great about an overlay gray layer like this is now I can dodge right on that. And I can burn right on that. So if I want to burn maybe the shadows underneath it or the shadows opposite where that that key light is coming from. Again, I want to do it to the midtones, less than 20%, nice and big and soft. But I can kind of burn a little bit of the bottom of my creature here. Or under the arm. On the creature's body. Or under the jaw a little bit more. Or inside the mouth. Or on this side of the head. Okay, so I remember dodge and burn go fast. And so now what I'm actually doing is burning and dodging on the gray. But because I set it to overlay mode, non-destructive overlay, not only is it taking less pixels in memory, because it doesn't need to have all the variation of, of a full copy of my creature, but that is changing the lighting of my creature in a way that better suits the environment. Now, if I add the arm back in, where I did those direct adjustments, you can see that the lighting I did with the overlay layer is a little bit more balanced than the lighting directly on the arm. And the reason for that is when you dodge and burn something that's middle gray, it kind of cuts all of your steps in half. It's not going to let you go to full black. It's not going to let you go to full white. It's just going to give you variations on middle gray. It's like using the levels and just using the midtone slider. So it's also not just non-destructive to your original pixels. It's also kind of a safer way to use these tools more aggressively without them getting too strong. If I want to create kind of a core shadow down and through it, I do it on that non-destructive overlay layer. Now that's for the creature. And again, what's the difference? Well, if I do it on the arm, I don't have an overlay layer for that. So when I use burn directly on the arm, like on this side, on this side, do you see how it changes the colors of the pixels? While I do it, I might need to use sponge then. Whereas when you do it on an overlay layer, it just does kind of a, a pale shadow, shade shadow lighting. It's never going to oversaturate or desaturate because you're working from gray, which is already not saturated. There's no color content to mess with. Okay, the other thing is, as your creature is being dodged and burned, like there might be places it has light that doesn't make any sense. So the light here doesn't make any sense. And I can't burn that away when I'm on midtones. So now I need to shift my burning to my highlights. And it is safe to burn highlights. And sometimes, because that's so bright, that's outside of the realm of what can be done on the overlay layer. You know, I can burn it, burn it, burn it. But 
those highlights are still coming through. So then I might need to go to my actual copy of my creature and then just burn those highlights down. But be gentle with it because that lighting direction doesn't quite make sense. And then once I burn that down, I can go back to my overlay layer. I can go back to the midtones and I can get a little deeper in these shadows. So dodging and burning using a non-destructive overlay layer when appropriate can make a big difference. Now, what about the shadow that my creature casts on the ground? Right? This is pretty strong side lighting. My creature is coming through this kind of crevice with light coming behind. Um, I might do something like this. I might take my creature layer, do a duplicate of my creature layer. I'll put it on top here so you can see what I'm doing. I might double click it, fill it with gray, just like I did before. It's good to practice these skills, right? Or I might even fill it with a gradient. Oh, I kind of like the gradient on my creature. <laughs> and you can adjust kind of lighting this way. This is a gradient overlay. But this is starting to help match the atmosphere. Ooh, little rainbow. I like that. I'm going to use that. But next. What I'm going to do is create a drop shadow. So instead of a gradient overlay, let's just do basic gray. Okay, now I'm going to transform it and flip it horizontally, or vertically rather, sorry, so that it's a shadow underneath my creature. Right? Now I'm going to move that underneath my creature layer. This is to create a cast shadow, like a strong cast shadow. But it's not like a reflection in a pond where it's directly this way. The angle of the light matters for your shadow, even if it's just at the corner here. So I'm going to Command T, and then I'm going to right click and do what's called perspective. And I'm going to shift the angle of it in this direction. There we go. So it's informed by the shape of the creature and the arm. You see that's the, the shape of the hand. But it's starting to pull out this way. And the more I shift its perspective out, the more that will kind of grow. You can also then right click. And distort is a very good tool for this, for kind of pulling away your shadows. So, yeah, I think about that shape might be pretty useful. I can even just rotate it slightly. It really has to do with the angle of your environment. Okay, now to make that look like a shadow, if I go to Effects, I can do a gradient overlay on it. So I can turn off the color overlay for the moment. And the gradient overlay is going to be just the basic you go to your basics folder and it's just going to be light to dark. And I'm going to put it on normal mode. I've been doing a lot of complicated things with my gradients lately, which is why my settings are not at their defaults. And you want it to be darkest right underneath your creature. And then you can play with the scale. I don't want reflected. I want normal, linear. There we go. And then you can set the angle to match the lighting conditions. So how is it pulling away? It's kind of pulling away in this direction. And then you can play with the scale to see how quickly it's pulling away. So something like that seems to work for my creature. So I'm creating a cast shadow underneath. Now how do I blend that into its environment? Well, I can do that with opacity. Or I can set it to our favorite overlay mode, but that only works if I rasterize the layer style. Right click on it, 
rasterized layer style. 